Kia ora tato. Welcome everyone. We are very excited to be able to jointly announce today that we plan to have a full season of cricket played on New Zealand soil this summer. In a year that has been filled with uncertainty and stress, I think Kiwis deserve a great summer of watching the Black Caps and the White Ferns playing on home soil, hopefully in front of packed venues and grandstands. The New Zealand Summer of Cricket will start on Friday, the 27th of November, with a T20 international between the Black Caps and the West Indies at Eden Park. The match will be, of course, streamed live on Spark Sport, as will all international games this summer, and will also be televised live free-to-air on TVNZ1. This will mark the start of a six-year partnership between New Zealand Cricket, Spark Sport, and TVNZ to bring New Zealand cricket to Kiwi viewers. Given the challenges involved in holding international sports events currently, I'd like to acknowledge and thank both New Zealand cricket and the New Zealand government for ensuring these tours can happen safely during what we all know are difficult and uncertain times. Finally, now that we have a start date of the 27th of November, New Zealand cricket fans have two months to make sure they're stream ready one of the few positives to come out of lockdown is that we've all had to ensure we have really good internet connectivity in our houses and streaming traffic has jumped significantly. Despite this though, I encourage all cricket fans to check that they have the best internet available to them, get set up and ready to stream Spark Sport now. We have a team at Spark ready to help, plenty of self-help resources at helpsparksport.co.nz, so get stuck in. Okay, it's now my pleasure to introduce you to Kate Slater, Director of Content at TVNZ. Thank you, Jeff, and kia ora koutou. Uh, look, we're delighted to be partnering with New Zealand Cricket and Spark Sport to bring selected international and domestic T20 matches live and free to New Zealand. It's the first time in over 20 years that we'll have New Zealand Cricket matches played on TVNZ, and we know there'll be a huge appetite for them, given our recent success with the T20 Black Clash, where we saw, we were seeing over a million Kiwis tuning in to see those exhibition matches. We'll be screening one of every Black Caps and White Ferns T20 series live on TVNZ1, and two men's and two women's Super Smash matches live per week on across TVNZ1 and Duke. It is a terrific lineup of summer cricket, and we're hugely thankful to New Zealand Cricket and the New Zealand Government for working so hard to make sure that Kiwis can enjoy some great summer sport at a time they need it more than ever. We can't wait to get stuck into our six year partnership with New Zealand Cricket and Spark to grow the nation's favourite summer sport even further. Kelda. Thanks Kate and thanks Jeff. Um, the last six, seven, six or seven months has been really challenging. Um, we've had an incredibly complex situation and um, to think now that we're going to have a full season of international cricket is a huge relief for New Zealand cricket. We, um, we've worked very closely with a number of partners that have made this happen. Like Jeff and Kate said, we also thank the New Zealand government uh, and their government, the government agencies have been quite outstanding and have made it possible for us to have international cricket this year. Also, uh, the member countries, we've worked with uh, to make sure that cricket throughout the world can continue. So we'd like to acknowledge them as well. And finally, our commercial partners, uh, in particular, our new broadcast partners, Spark Sport and TVNZ. I'd like to thank them for uh, their patience. It's been, um, it, it's been a challenging time, and I think we got up to version 37 um, as of last night of the schedule. So thank you very much for your patience, and uh, we're really looking forward to the season. Not only, uh, not only uh, international cricket for the men and women, of which we're going to have around 50 days, but also the Super Smash as well, where for the first time in a number of years, we're going to have black caps and white ferns available for that competition. So uh, we're now happy to take questions. What, I suppose, is the new quarantine regulations for these teams coming in? Are we going to see the potential quarantine for them coming out yeah, we announced last week uh, with the government that it's most likely that the uh, the teams will arrive in Auckland. Uh, there'll be a charter flight going down to most likely Christchurch, where they will quarantine uh, in their rooms for three days. 
and then they'll stay in quarantine for 14 days in bubbles of a maximum of 15, uh, but they will be able to train at our high performance centre at Lincoln University. And I suppose we're running what's holding back an outcome of Australia? Oh, we're just working, they've got a, another tour as well, and they're just trying to work through the, uh, the complexity of the managed isolation with that tour as well. Uh, but we're confident within the next seven to 10 days, we'll have that finalised. And how um, exciting was it to see Mayo all back post from Boxing Day? Yeah, well, the, the test matches are really interesting. So we've got four test matches. And, and if, we, um, if we play well in those test matches, we're, we are a, a strong chance to make the first ever World Test Match Championship. Um, so test matches are going to be really important this year. And uh, be the first ever uh, Boxing Day Test match at Bay Oval, which is going to be uh, great, great for the people um, during the summer period. Are there any concerns um, hosting some of those matches at Eden Park, or potentially change to alert levels or like So, interesting question. So, we we will play cricket at alert level one and two. Um, obviously, at two, you can't have crowds, but uh, we have built in a a model of contingency. If one of the areas in New Zealand goes to a higher level, then we can transfer those games. A question for Dave. What was it like dealing with Pakistan and the West Indies over the skin of their two countries who have dealt with the quarantine situation already in England and how you know, receptive were they to, to the arrangements? Like I said before, all the member countries have been you know, really, really positive about it. They just want to play cricket. Um, we're quite lucky that Pakistan and the West Indies have been to England and they have um, experienced the quarantine there, which is actually more stringent than our quarantine. In New Zealand, they'll only have to be in isolation for 14 days and then they can be like the rest of the public. So, um, you know, just talking to our players and, and I know the overseas players, they just want to play cricket. Um, so all the guys are really just... and. and and the and the uh, the white fans and the female players just want to get out and play. I'm sort of just going on what was asked before about the uh, alert rules. Will these games and the schedule still say the same? Um, you know, that we do go back and lock down the ready play for that. The same schedule. Yeah. Um, listen, we, we we've got flexibility, um, but it's quite complex to be quite honest. Um, We'll work through that and with our broadcast partners as we go through. But uh, what I can say is that there will be cricket played at level one and two. Can I use something in the white um, Even though we know we're still waiting on that body woman confirmation, was there any other, um, you know, do we want to try and get any other women sides? They were supposed to be playing the World Cup, as you know. Um, so um, we wanted to get as much cricket as we can could for them. Um, it's, it's quite a, a full tour, um, two tours really, where they'll play a combination of T20 and one day games. They'll also play the whole Super Smash and as well they're, they're currently in Australia as you know as well. So it's a really full season for them as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.